Soldiers. General. General. At ease. Welcome to the war. This isn't conventional warfare, soldiers. This is the battleground of the unseen against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places where faith is exposed and fear is tested. But General, how do you fight what you can't see? We've trained for this, soldier. We have the tools if we choose to use them. Worship, fasting, fellowship, obedience, renewing our mind, sharing your testimony, the blood of Jesus, which will never, never lose its power. power. That is your offense. Never retreat. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the, the word, word of God. God. That is your armor. Don't ever forget to put it on. <laughs> Just point me to the fight, General. Stay alert, sober-minded. The enemy does not sleep. He has a specifically designed, tailor-made plan with your name on it. Our mission is clear. Our enemy, formidable. But our victory is assured. Soldiers, prepare yourselves. This means war. Report. Tell, tell your neighbor, this means war. They didn't believe you. Tell your other neighbor, this means war. Tell the person in front of you, suit up. Suit up. Suit up. New series, This Means War. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the life of a, of a believer does come with warfare. The life of a believer does come with a fight. And whether you know this yet or not, you are actually in a battle as I'm speaking. And so sometimes, often, we don't speak about spiritual warfare for various reasons. One reason could be because of um, some people are overly charismatic about it. One reason could be that you shied away from spiritual warfare is because uh, it, it, in some circles, has become an entire ministry. I'm not saying either is good or bad. What I'm saying is don't let those things make you not realize that you're actually in a fight. We are actually in a fight. And so for the next several weeks, I think Pastor JP is watching live right now somewhere because uh, Professor Foster's here today. We're going to teach this thing. <laughs> we, we're going to teach the text so that you and I can, can really move forward in what God has for us. There's a couple things I want to give you a heads up about this series. We, we are going to use our social media platforms to really give practical tools and what you can do if you're in a battle, if you're going under attack or you may be going through something. Um, also, we actually have a, a journal that you can use to take notes in that's digital online, uh, faithfulcentral.com. So if you go on our website, there will be a, 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 the banner. You can click on it, and there's a journal that you can use with, with, with practical steps in writing in it for you to follow the next, uh, next several weeks. Amen? Amen. We, are, we are trying to be equipped for the battle that we are in, not that's coming. We're in one right now. Amen. So can we pray and get into the word? Yes. Amen. God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We ask God that you would cover us. We ask God that your word would not go in one ear and out the other, but deep into our hearts to transform us into the men and women of God you've called us to be. Speak Holy Spirit words of life. Use everything in me, my success, my failure to display your glory and majesty, God. Lord, in this hour, Give us ears to hear and eyes to see so that we may be transformed into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, as your word is declared, we bind every distraction. We ask, Lord, that your word will be declared and the truth of it would reveal that the enemy has lost and we have victory in Jesus. Now, God, as we go forward in this study, we ask, God, that you would be glorified. We, your people, will be sanctified and that the devil in hell will be horrified. 
we say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. So if you have your, if you have your Bibles, we are, in, we're, we are gonna be in Ephesians. Uh, we're gonna actually go straight to, straight to the end of chapter six. But Paul, Paul writes this letter or this epistle, this letter to the church of Ephesus and he's writing this. And throughout this letter, if you start from chapter one you, and, you, and you move down to chapter six, you'll see that he's urging the believers to live a life in Jesus Christ. He's urging uh, uh, believers to live a life in Jesus Christ and what that looks like. Now, he reveals to believers and urges believers to stand against the culture, the, the pagan worship and the pagan lifestyle. He also urges uh, believers not to allow sin to remain among them. He also wants us to reflect unity and self-giving. Lord have mercy. We're gonna, we're gonna make, they're going to make me work today. All right. The, they, Paul pushes us to believers to reflect the character of the gospel. One amen. God bless you. I don't mind working. Uh, he also... Uh, urges believers to separate themselves from darkness, right? He, Paul does not shy away from the fact that there's evil in the world, there's darkness in the world, and that some individuals walk in darkness. He, he goes on in, in chapter 6 to push or urge the believer to action. And the, and the action, he says, is to take a stand. Why? Take a stand because evil is still very present. One more time. He's urging believers, sh shy away, shun away, separate yourself from evil, separate yourself from darkness. But, but he also is very honest in saying, but guess what? Darkness is around us. Darkness and evil is around us. And he says that as believers, we need to first understand that there is evil among us. Understand that the enemy's goal is to pull you into or lure you into darkness. And he says, take a stand against it. Why? Because it's very present. And the way in which uh, Paul begins to explain to us what we should do and how we should take action is he begins to use battle language. He, he begins to use terms that are, are, are military or battle terms. He, he, he doesn't shy away from the fact that we, we, we need to know that we're in a battle. Paul reminds us that living the life in Christ is not just love. L living the life of a believer is not just joy. Living the life of a believer is not just peace. Living the life of a believer is not just patience. Living the life of a believer is not just kindness. Living the life of a believer is not just goodness. Living the life of a believer is not just faithfulness. Living the life of a believer is not just gentleness. Living the life of a believer is not just self-control. Living the life of a believer is not just being in community. Being and living the life of a believer is not just fellowship. Being and living the life of a believer is not just worship. Being and living the life of a believer is not just prayer. Being and living the life of a believer is not just reading the word. Being and living the life of a believer is also a fight. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but, but he, he also urges to say all, all, the, all the good old love language and fruit, fruit of the spirit, but also recognize you're in a fight. <laughs> there are seasons of our life where, you, you, you know, you, you give your life to Christ and you're in seasons where... You, your, your, your spiritual, your walk with God right now, it just, it just feels like you're walking down the summer beach with a cool breeze. Just, I, I know this section feels it. Lord, have all, the amount of people that stood up for job check in this section. Sometimes the life of, of a believer, you feel like, you know, you're just walking the summer beach, standing between your toes. You hear the waves and the br good old cool breeze in the summertime. But sometimes... Somebody say sometimes. sometimes. The life of a believer feels like 
a straight up dog fight. Have, have you ever been in a season of your life where you're like, oh, okay, this is, this is the channel that we're on. I, I have to get ready because I just realized I'm in a fight. Now, so, so, sometimes you gotta get ready because you, you know that you're in a fight. Sometimes you gotta prepare yourself because you know you're in a fight. Sometimes you gotta get ready because you know that you're in a fight. Sometimes as a believer, you realize, hold on a minute, I'm in the middle of a fight and you gotta get ready. Paul says, you're in a fight. And sometimes the fight is me fighting to live from one day to the next day. Some, sometimes the fight is, Lord, please help me with my children. Sometimes the fight is for your family. Sometimes the fight is for your household. Sometimes the fight is for your job, your employment. Sometimes the fight is for your finances. Sometimes the fight is for your hopes. And sometimes the fight is for your dreams. Sometimes you are doing everything you can just to hold on because you're in a fight. And if you let your hands down, everything will collapse. Sometimes living the life of a believer feels like a cool summer breeze, but I got a testimony that I've had seasons of my life where I felt like I was in the ring and I had no choice but to go 12 rounds. And it took every ounce of salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit to help me get from one round to the next round. But I decided, devil, come at me if you want to. I'm not quitting. My back may be against the ropes, but I'm not quitting. Hold on to that towel, because I ain't never thrown in the towel when I got the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm never thrown in the towel when I got the power of the precious Holy Ghost. Is there any testimonies in here that your knees may have buckled, but I'm standing in the power of God. I'm not giving it. If I got to go 12 rounds at the end, they'll declare by unanimous decision that God still reigns supreme. So at least four people ought to help me praise God because I'm praising him in round one. And I'm going to praise him in round two. And I'm going to praise him in round three. And I'm going to praise him in round four. And I'm going to praise him in round five. I'm praising him in round six. I'm halfway there, devil. I'm praising him in round seven. And I'm going to lift up his holy name in round eight because that's the number of completion. I'm going to praise God in round nine. And I'm praising him in round 10. And when I get to 11, devil, you should have took me out way back there. Because now I've mustered up some strength and God is still with me. So if God is with me, who can stand against me? Do I got at least one testimony in here that you walked in the round 12 with your head up high, your shoulders back, waving your hands? I already got the victory because Jesus is on the throne and he reigns supreme. I came to tell somebody this morning, don't quit because God will walk with you in this season of the battle. Help me praise God for about four seconds for his power. I'm not quitting. Tell them, I'm not quitting. You might as well type it in the chat. I'm not quitting. I'm in a fight, but I'm not quitting. Tell, tell your neighbor, ain't no quitting me. I may feel weary, but there ain't no quitting me. I may be tired, but there ain't no quitting me. I may have to cry myself to sleep, but it ain't no quitting me. Sweat from my brow, ain't no quitting me. Blood flowing, but no quitting. Devil, I came to tell you today, you tried the wrong one. I'm God's son. You tried the wrong one. There's God's daughter. Sometimes you gotta remind yourself the same God that pulled me out of that fight is the same God standing in this fight. I'm not quitting. I may be weak, but that's when the power of God is made perfect. Help me praise God one last time. I feel like preaching today. I feel like preaching. Listen. And he, he tells us, listen to me, he tells us, he says, listen to me. Joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all of that. Embrace it. 
but also embrace the fact that you, my friend, are in a fight. All right? Now, now then, then, then he says, he says, listen, he names three imperatives. Three imperatives in chapter 3, starting in chapter 6, starting at verse 10, if you're in Ephesians. The, 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 the first thing he says is, be strong. Second thing he says, stand. Third thing he says is, put on. One more time. He gives three. These are not suggestions. <laughs> Just help you out. These are not suggestions. So let, me, so let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you because you're in a battle. S spiritual warfare. Listen, first thing you need to do is be strong. Imperative. Imperative number two. Stand. Number three, put on. He, listen, he's pushing, corralling, imploring, beseeching, pleading with. Please take action. What action are you going to take? I want you to be strong. I want you to stand, and I want you to put on. And and this, this, is when I, this is when I learned, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What he's saying is, suit up. Don't, 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 don't have the commander catch you in your PJs. No, when, when the commander calls the troops, be suited. Suit up. Be ready. Then, 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 he, then he goes, that's when I learned, I learned, Paul, Paul he messed with me, he, 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 he says to me, this is what I need you to make sure you do. What, what, what do I need to do? Suit up and suiting up requires strength. Y'all don't believe me. Go to your Bible. Go to your Bible. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Verse 10. We're going to read all the way through verse 13. This, this is the type of battle he mentions to us. He says, finally. Hold on. Stop right there. <laughs> he, I, I done, I, 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 this is bad English. I done said all this. Finally, be strong. Don't miss that. He, he would not, listen, he would not put down the pen until he wrote these final words. Think, think about this. He, 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 he dipped a, 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 a stick in ink and continued writing on the papyrus, the scroll and would not put it down until he pinned, finally, be strong, watch this now, in the Lord and his mighty power. Then he says, put on the full armor of God. Why? Why? You ask great questions on a Sunday morning. So that you can take your stand, watch this, against... The devil's schemes. Another translation says, the schemes of the evil one. Another translation says, the craftiness of the evil one. Why? Well, here we go. You might want to write this one. Don't read, your, don't, don't read, read it and then write it all out. Verse 12. He says, for our struggle. Another translation says, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Got to say it twice. Our wrestle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, watch this, so that when the day of evil comes, hold on. He didn't say if. He didn't say if the day of evil comes. He says, when the day of evil comes, watch this now, you may be able, here, here's the word again, to stand your ground. And after you've done all you can do, stand. Now, now go back to verse 12 real quick. He says, he says to us that, that uh, 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 we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, right? 
but against, against rulers, against authorities, against powers of darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Now, let, 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 me, let me help you out before we get, get super, super deep. Now, Jesus, watch this now. Jesus is, he got up with all power in, in his hand in where? In heaven and on Oh, y'all know the word. Amen. Come on, help, help me praise God right now. I know you wrote it in the chat. He says, listen, and he says, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but powers of darkness and evil in the heavenly realm. Now, one, one theologian uh, says the danger of over-spiritualizing this text is that we miss the fact that our Christ, our Redeemer, sits on the throne in heaven with all power. And so the, 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 the enemy or forces of darkness, watch the now, it says darkness of this world. Are re, are, we're, we're warring against the victory that we've already established in Jesus Christ in the heavenlies. And the spiritual forces of darkness are trying to disrupt our life here on earth. But we have to keep our mind where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And the devil's objective is to shake up life so much that you forget you already have authority and victory in Jesus Christ in the heavenly realm. I told you I was trying, I'm trying not to teach. Now, the next thing he says is, whatever you do, be strong. So if you're taking notes, suiting up, watch this now, re, it, it requires us to be strong. Now, it's, this, this is interesting. Suiting up requires you and I to, to be strong. Now, 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 he says, but the fight that we need strength for is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and, 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 and forces and evil and darkness. Now, when he says that the battle is not against flesh and blood, it means the, the, the battle, the wrestle, the struggle we have is not a person. Now, I, I've had seasons of my life where I allowed the enemy to distract me with the person. But the person just allowed themselves to be employed by the enemy because some people don't mind letting the devil use them. <laughs> I'm gonna get, start the car. Start the, start, the, start the car. Start the car. Start the car. And, and so we, we, we get distracted because we think that it's the crazy, I mean, the person that's in front of us. And, and we, we, we use energy and, 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 and all, every ounce of our salvation arguing with the person in front of us. And you didn't realize yet that that person was actually employed by the dead enemy to try to disrupt you. Why? Because the enemy is trying to get you to act outside of who you know you are in Christ. And you, 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 you may be perfect. You ain't never made no mistakes. And you, 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 you real tight with Jesus. I, I got a testimony that, that uh, 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 every once in a while, I ain't got no love left. I ain't got no patience left. And I'm about to lose my self-control. And the enemy can use somebody to push the right buttons, pull on the right strings to make you go get the old man that was buried. Bring him up. And you went from praying to cussing and fussing and giving them the business, and you don't know why, because the, de the fight is not against flesh and blood, but we allow flesh and blood, watch this, to get us to act outside of who we really are. And then once we've embarrassed ourselves and embarrassed God, the enemy's laughing at us because when we do it, we lose. I'm trying to hold on to all of Jesus in this city so that you don't end up doing something that's outside of who you are in Christ. He says, it's flesh and blood. Don't get caught up in flesh and blood. Watch this. He says, it's rulers and powers of darkness. Can I help you out? Your fight is not against your neighbor. It's against powers and forces and evil and darkness. 
Your fight, it's not against your family member. It's against powers, forces, evil, and darkness in the spiritual realm. Your, 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 your fight, now I got to look up, it's not against your husband. It's against powers, forces, evil, and darkness in the heavenlies. I got to keep looking up. Your wrestle, your fight is not against your wife. It's against powers and forces and evil and darkness. Uh, is the car, the car, the, okay, okay, one of y'all open the door. Your fight is not against your ex. One of y'all, can y'all one of y'all just stay, be real close to that door? I felt, I felt a run. It's against power. Y'all, oh y'all preaching over here. Y'all preaching. I can't run that way. <laughs> can you take the car to the other side? <laughs> going down there. Where, where's my, where's my elder at? Where are you? Where are you? I, yeah, you're going, going to make a way right over. Right, get right on down that section. Your wrestle. It's not against your coworker. But I ain't got nowhere to, you can't run it. I ain't got nowhere to. You got me over here? All right. It's against powers, forces, evil, and darkness in the heavenly. The, the fight is not the, if, if we get caught up in the person in front of us, We'll miss it. We'll miss it. Because, be honest, if you can be used by God, some people don't mind being used by the enemy. And so the enemy will use them to cause us to act outside of who we know we are in Christ. And so, so, so Paul says to us, finally, be strong. Don't miss that. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Now, one of the imperatives he uses is, is be strong. Now, this is interesting because when I, when I you know, when you read scripture um, in, in, Eng, in the English translation, when you see power or strength, you pretty much think power is it's, it's the same from Genesis to Revelation. You see strength, you think, oh, I know what strength is. It's the same from Genesis to Revelation. But in the original language, there are nuances that, that, that highlight or heighten for us the impact this particular word actually means, has in the original text. Now, in, in, when, he says, when he says that uh, be strong in the Lord, right, because we're in battle. I'm, think, I'm saying to myself, okay, I need to, I need to, we're in a fight, we're in a battle. I need to bring every ounce of strength I have to the, to the front line. When, when, I, when I read it, I'm like, okay, Lord, so, so you want me to muster up as much strength and power I possibly can and bring it to the fight. I, I think, okay, so God, you want me to bring as much courage and boldness, I ain't backing down, as I possibly can because I'm in battle. You, Lord, you want, me, you want me to bring every bit every ounce, every drop of strength and get ready to fight. And, and then, then I, 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 I got messed up because I, I, I read the text. And I realized it, it wasn't strength that I can bring. It is strength that I'm supposed to be in. In this battle, Paul reveals to us, you do not have enough strength in and of yourself that you can muster up against the enemy for this fight. 
So I don't need you to bring strength. I need you to be in strength. Let me see if I can help you. Let me see if I can help you. Now, we, we learned two words last Sunday, right? We learned dunamis, duname. Come on, y'all really, this, got some scholars in this section. Dunamis, duname. Now, now dunamis is, is power, right? It, it, it's power. We learned that, that God, 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 the same power, dunamis, power, that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in us. Now, there's a difference because dunamis, duname, reveals to us God's uh, omnipotence. In other words, God has the power to do whatever he wants at any point in time he chooses. So du uh, dunamis is power in general. But the word, that, the, word, the word used as duname reveals to us that it is a strength that can or a strength that is able, which means, that, come on, y'all really preach. She said the ability, Lord have mercy, right? But this, this particular word for strength is, is, uh, is in dunamu. Oh, well. Now, this, this type of strength you can't bring because this type of strength is you actually being strengthened or you actually becoming strong. So it means if I'm, if I'm in this spiritual battle against the enemy, I, I have to be humble enough to realize that I can only make it through this type of battle with the Lord. Because be strong is not bring your strength. It is to be in the strength that only comes from God. It, it means in the seasons of my life when I have ran out of strength, I am being strengthened by God. It, th this type of strength is the strength, watch this, that only a believer can draw from the victory that comes in our relationship with God. So, so if, if, if I want this type of power, I have to be in relation to the one who has it. Can I go a little deeper? Now, it, it, it's also, this, 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 uh, this, this particular verb, it, it is, it is an, uh, it's, it's a present verb. Now, let me see if I can help you. It means that this type of verb is in the continual tense. It, 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 it means that uh, it, th this, this is not just a one-time power you receive. It, it means on my journey as a believer, I'm going to continue to need to draw from the power that comes from God. And as I have seasons of my life where I'm weak or I don't have it or my mind is aching or my, I'm, I feel like depression is coming or I, I feel like anxiety is coming over me or I, I feel like fear is coming over me or I feel like I'm not going to make it. I, as a believer then, I draw from the strength that God continues to give me on my journey as a believer. And he says, when I need a soldier, be strong, suit up. But remain in the power and strength that comes from God. As a Christian, as a believer, going where God has called you to be, you're going to need strength that's outside of you to get victory in your battle. Hold on. Here's the danger. Now, if you're arrogant, prideful, boastful, you'll make the error of thinking you can actually win this battle on your own. And the devil is counting on you thinking too much of yourself. In this battle, Paul reveals to us, listen, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. You go to the battle lines, you need to realize now, this is, this is what's interesting. Paul uses the word mighty power. Now, if you read, if you read uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, he expresses to the believers, I want you to know the power of God. One more time. I want you to know the strength. Ephesians chapter 1, I think it's around verse 10 to verse 19. I need you to know, at least I need you to know the power of God. In this chapter, he's saying, 
I want you to know the power of God. Then he goes on to say, now I want you to use the power of God. See if I can help you. He, he reveals to us that this type of power that, we, that is available to us is a power that you need to know. You need to know the, the power that, that, it, that is available to you so that you know you can use it. Now, if you don't know, no power. Limited knowledge of his power, limited power showing up in my life. He connects our ability to know the power of God. Watch this, so in chapter 6, we can use the power of God available to us in the battle. But I first need to know how great his power is so I know how to use his power when I'm in battle. Well, how does his power work? Well, the first thing is I know that the power of God had the ability to raise a dead Jesus from the dead. That's one thing I know about his power. What else do you know about his power, Pastor JP? Well, I also know that the power of God allowed him to walk on water. I also know that the same power, the power that comes from God, was able, watch this now, to allow three Hebrew boys to stand in a burning, fiery furnace. You didn't like that one. I also know that that same power was able to keep Daniel in a lion's den. Y'all didn't like that one. The power I know about God is the same power that's able to talk to the storm and the storm has to stop. Y'all didn't like that one. It's the same power, watch this now, that when the uh, dead Lazarus daughter was dead, Jairus' daughter got back up. That type of power. Pastor, what kind of power are you talking about? The same power that when the woman had an issue of blood and she touched the hem of his garment, she was made whole. That type of power. Pastor, what kind of power? The same power that when the lame man could not walk, Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk, and that man got up and started walking. That's the type of power I'm talking about. Pastor, what kind of power do you mean? I'm talking about the same power that stopped a demon-possessed boy from going to and fro and hammering himself on the ground, and he made the enemy leave him. That's the type of power I'm talking about. Pastor, what kind of power? I'm talking about the kind of power that when the man went to Jesus blind, he walked away with his sight. That's the kind of power I'm talking about. Pastor, what kind of power do you mean? I'm talking about the kind of power that can cause a shipwreck and Paul still make it to the other side because God's power does not fail. Is there anybody in here today that you've experienced power? Now, I'm asking you about this power because I have a sneaky suspicion and a holy hunch that that same power has shown up in your life. That when you got doctor's report, that power showed up. When your finances were in shamble, the power showed up. When your body was sick, that same power showed up. When you had anxiety and depression, that same power showed up. When the enemy was trying to attack you, that same power showed up. The weapon was formed against you, but by the power of God, that weapon did not prosper. I'm talking about the power of God. When they talk crazy to you on your job, the power showed up. When your supervisor lost his mind, the power showed up. When your kid lost their way, his power showed up. When your grandbaby lost their way, his power showed up. Is there anybody in here that's experienced the power of God? He said, I need you to suit up and stand in the power of God. You may get tired, but stand in the power of God. You may get weak, but stand in the power of God. Your, might, your sanity may be leaving you, but stand in the power of God. I came to tell the devil, I'm standing in the power of God. Be strong. Tell your neighbor, be strong. Paul says, listen, be strong. You sit, sit down, sit down. We're about to go to brunch. My car, my car is already on. The door is open. Watch this. Th this is the power. He says, Stand in the, in, in the Lord, in the, in the, in the, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. It, it, it has a, a, it's knowledge power. Now, the reason why this is important is because, listen, I, I, I was charging um, a, a vehicle. And, and I, the, the, I learned something. The, the different amps 
depending on what kind of charge you're using, the, amp, the amps make a big difference. Now, I did not know that some of them, they come with a standard limitation. The standard limitation is to make sure that the, the, the battery is not overcharged or too much power hits the battery because it would ruin the battery. Now, what I, what I did not know, the gentleman showed me, he said, hey, listen, uh, uh, you, you, you are not using <laughs> this charger to its full ability. What do you mean? Well, if you go in the app, you can actually change the amps. And actually, this vehicle, you can double it. I said, what are you talking about? It means your car can charge faster than it already is. I said, what are you talking about? He said, listen, you, 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 you have limited power because you have limited knowledge. <laughs> but, but, but once I, I knew it, I couldn't unknow it. <laughs> so, so, some of us are only using half of the power of God that's available to us because we don't have enough knowledge about him. I dare you to read the word of God. I dare you to stand in God. I dare you to stand on his promises. But the only way I can know the power of God is by knowing him. Do you know him for yourself? Grandma knows him. Mama knows him. Grandpa knows him. Papa knows him. But do you know him for yourself? I came to tell somebody today, the more knowledge I have of God, the more power of God that is evident in my life. Help me praise God. Got, got, a, little bit more, got a little bit more time. Now, I got to suit up. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. We, you got to suit up. Suiting up requires the strength of God. Right? Here's the last one. Suit, suiting up requires us, here it is, to stand firm. Are you with me? Now, suiting up requires us to take a stand. All right, how do I do that? Verse 11 says this, put on. Here it is, the full armor of God that you may take a stand, watch this, against the schemes of the enemy. This will bless your life. Now, why do I need the full armor of God? Why do I need to stand, watch this, why do I need to be in the strength of God? Why do I need to put on the full armor of God? You ask great questions. Because, because Paul says, so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. One of the ways in which the enemy attacks us is through schemes. So if one of his tactics is to get us through schemes, I need to know what schemes are. Right? One translation says, uh, protect yourself or guard yourself against the wiles of the enemy. <laughs> Another translation says, protect yourself against the craftiness of the enemy. Another translation says, don't be bewitched by the enemy. But, but what, is, what, is, what, what are these schemes? What is a scheme? Well, you ask great questions. Now, schemes, schemes. Scheme is crafty scheming, watch this, with the intent to deceive. Wait a minute. So, the intent of the enemy is to deceive me. Yes, it is. So a scheme uh, is, a, is a, it could be a, 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 pl a plan, right, that, that he's going to use to deceive you. Are you with me? Now, the, the enemy rarely shows up and says, hey, how you doing today? <laughs> no soliciting. Hey, how you doing today? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I I'm, I'm, uh, just want to let you know. Uh, uh, what's your name? John Paul. Oh, great, 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 great. Uh, and you? I'm the devil. <laughs> and I want to come in and wreck your life. <laughs> he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. You, you, what, what he does is, watch this, he, he creates a scheme. And 
and appears very attractive or desirable so that he can gain entrance into your life. Now, uh, he, he camouflages himself and uses bait so that he can gain entrance in. Now, I got to be real careful because I didn't start at the car. They open the door. The only thing I can do now is just drive off. Now, he, one example of this is the, the devil, he dresses up evil. He, he dresses up, makes evil look real good. Right? Y'all don't believe me? Let's, let's go, to, go to your Bible. Now, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Pastor, where's the text? 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. It's almost time to go to brunch. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. This is what it says, 11, 14, 11, 14. 14 says, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades, watch this, as an angel of light. Hold up. Somebody said, wait a minute. What, who said that? Watch this. He says, the devil masquerades like, disguises himself as. In other words, he's not light. But he disguises or dresses himself up as light. Why? He pretends to be light because he knows he can only get away in acting like he's light just to get in and to bring darkness. Now, he cannot get access unless he lies and tricks and is crafty so that you will drop your guard and let the devil in thinking it's light, but he's like light, he's not light. Let me see if I can help you. Now, uh, the devil is like a Trojan horse. Now, it came masquerading about like a peace offering. It, it came masquerading about as a good deed. It came about masquerading about as an honest gesture. Now, because they were deceived, they, they, they let the horse in. Now, what they did not know was, once it gained entrance in, the goal the whole time was to destroy everything that was on the other side of the gate. And so every once in a while, the enemy will masquerade himself like something so he can destroy your family. He, he don't, they, didn't, they didn't come in there and say, hey, uh, we're, we're all hiding in the horse, and as soon as we come in, we're going to destroy your house. Uh, 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 as soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your family. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your finances. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your children. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy a whole generation. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your hopes. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your dreams. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your mind. As soon as we come in here, we're going to destroy your body. He, they, the devil never comes in saying he's the devil. He comes in, in uh, disguising himself as a gift, sometimes a gift to your life. I've always been praying for a husband. I've always prayed for a wife. I've always prayed for this contract. I've always prayed for this business deal. I've, I've, I've prayed for it. Hold on. And watch this, because the enemy, listen, it's not temptation if it isn't what you like. He's 
going to bring what you like. And we have to have enough discernment and prayer that we can stand against the attacks of the enemy. Now, the biggest mistakes I've made in my life is when I wasn't in fellowship with God and when I wasn't in God's word. Now, it's hard for you to be deceived when you're in the word. But any time that my desire overrules the word of God, deception is on its way. And, 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 and as believers, watch this, the word of God says, walk in the strength of God. Then he says, take a stand against the enemy. Because he's coming with a, with a basket full of tricks. Promise he is. The word of God says that we're to put on, we're to, we're to, we're to take a stand, we are to, to suit up, and we're also, watch this, we're also to put on the full armor of God. Stand in his strength. His power, not mine. Humble myself. God, I cannot win this war without you. Then I have to be able to make a decision, no matter what comes my way, I'm standing my ground. Standing my ground. Because, because the devil has tricks and schemes and he's crafty. So I've made a decision, I'm standing my ground. Now, after I've stood, the word of God says, I gotta put on the full armor of God. Why? To withstand the attacks of the enemy. So when I'm in battle, I know I have to be strong in the power of God and the strength of his might. I have to stand my ground against the enemy and I have to put on the full armor of God. What do I got to put on? I have to put on the belt of truth. I must put on the breastplate of righteousness. I must put on, watch this now, the shoes of the gospel of peace. I must put on the shield of faith. Are you still with me? I must put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I must put on the helmet of salvation. And Lord have mercy, I need to pray. Is there anybody here today that is a soldier at the front line of Jesus Christ that says, I've come here this morning and I'm ready to suit up. And devil, I'm standing in the strength of God. Devil, I'm standing my ground. And devil, I'm putting not on, not some of the armor, I'm putting on the full armor of God so I can withstand the tricks of the enemy. So devil, I'm girding my waist with the belt of truth. I'm putting on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm putting on the shoes of the gospel. I'm using the shield of faith to protect me. I'm using the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and I'm putting on the helmet of salvation. And until I get victory, I'm going to pray my way through this bad boy and call on Jesus' name. Is there anybody willing to take a stand for Jesus Christ? Devil, bring what you may, but I'm not budging. Devil, bring what you may, but I'm not moving. Devil, bring what you may, but I'm standing in the strength of God. Devil, bring the wane if you want to. Bring the waves, but I'm standing. Bring the storm, but I'm standing because I'm trusting in the power of Jesus Christ with the full armor of God. Help me praise God for at least one second because I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. 